welcome to the next uh, lecture series on second order circuit we discussed the natural response in the previous two lectures and in this particular lecture we'll focus on step response of a series rlc circuit step response means the force response the dc response that we are going to apply to a series rlc circuit we first discussed the natural response now we are going for the force response so if you have a series rlc circuit which is controlled with the help of a switch and a dc voltage is applied that is vs we can apply the kvl equation supposing that the switch is closed at time t equal to 0 so at t equal to 0 the switch is closed so before the switch is not closed the system is under natural response where you will be having the initial voltage of the capacitor and the initial in the current of the inductor but when the switch will be closed then there will be forced response because the dc source which is the step source also because of the presence of the switch will come into picture and then you will be having the step response of a series rlc network since all the register inductor and capacitor are in series the current will be same in the entire network so you know that whenever there is a series circuit we go for the kvl equation so if we apply the kirchhoff's voltage law in the mesh which is algebraic sum of all the voltages in a closed mesh is equal to zero we can write the voltage drop across the inductor as ldi by dt the voltage drop across the register in accordance with ohm's law is i into r whereas the voltage of the capacitor which is the variable we are going to take as v is equal to the vs if you remember when we discussed the natural response the right hand side of the differential equation was zero because there it was natural response now this equation is basically the integral differential equation or not the differential equation in the pure form uh, we can convert that uh, by taking the current flowing through the network as cdv by dt because we have two variables here one is current and another is voltage we want to make it in pure differential equation where only one variable should present that is the voltage so the equation that we are going to get the maximum power or the order of the voltage is basically 2 that is second order differential equation so we have got a second order differential equation and on the right hand side if you observe there is some term which indicate also that the response that we are going to get is the force response now the solution basic form of this circuit which is also known as known as the total response of the rlc network here you will be having the summation of the transient condition plus the steady state condition steady state condition is the final condition which is equal to the supply voltage vs now the transient response that we have we have already covered this so the basic formulae that we are going to use for the system under over damped condition critically damped condition and under damped conditions you know the equations of the voltage with respect to the time and you will be having two constants a1 and a2 that you are going to determine from the initial condition of the voltage v of zero and the voltage dv by dt under initial condition zero so this is basically the transient response of the series rlc network and when we have the steady state response that is the final response will be equal to the supply voltage so the steady state response is the final voltage which is equal to the supply voltage and a1 and a2 we can determine from the initial condition v of zero and dv by dt under zeroth condition let us solve one problem to understand the problem behind the series rlc network where we have the step response you can see we have connected one source that is 24 volt we have register inductor capacitors uh, connected together so determine the voltage and the current for time t greater than zero so for time t greater than zero you can see the switch is open okay uh, previously the switch was closed and at time t equal greater than zero the switch is open so different conditions we will take by setting the value of the register as 5 ohms 4 ohms and 1 ohm we will see that on changing the value of the registers you will be getting different type of response that we have seen in the previous lecture too where we discussed the natural response also 
Let us take the first case that is resistance to be 5 ohms and see how the system flows in terms of the voltage and the current. So initial current what is flowing in the network first we have to determine and initial voltage what is there in the network that we have to determine. When we talk about the current we always talk about the inductor current and when we talk about the voltage it is always the capacitor voltage. So from the network at time 0 your switch is open and before that the switch was closed. So just before the time that is at time equal to 0 minus you have to determine the condition and you know that capacitor do not allow a sudden change in the voltage and inductor do not allow a sudden change in the current. So using that concept and the voltage division rule current division rule you can apply to find the current and the voltage at the initial condition. This is the first thing that you have to determine. I will not go into deep into that because you know how to determine that from the previous lectures okay now you will determine the value of alpha from the equation that is r by 2l this is a series rlc network so the formula will be r by 2l we have the value 2.5 and omega naught we have under 1 by under root of lc that is equal to 2 now from the values of alpha and omega naught we have to determine the roots of the characteristic equation so there will be two roots that we will be determining which are minus 1 and minus 4 using the equation minus alpha plus minus under root of alpha square minus omega naught square. Now observe these roots, the roots are real and unequal and alpha is greater than omega naught so the system is under overdamped natural response condition. Natural response because you are not connected with any source before time t uh, greater than 0. Okay, the source is being disconnected. Now, the network equation, which is the general equation of the RLC network, is basically the steady state plus the transient. The transient is coming from the overdamped condition, which is A1 e to the power minus t plus A2 e to the power minus 4t. And because there are two roots, minus 1 and minus 4, we can put the value of S1 and S2. The steady state response is basically the final response which is the DC uh, voltage that is applied to the network is equal to 24 volt. Now this is the equation of the voltage. The two unknown quantities are basically the constant A1 and A2 which we have to determine from the initial conditions or the boundary conditions. So voltage at time 0 you know that if we put the time to be 0 in this equation and the voltage at 0th condition is 4 volt. So we can equate that and form one equation in A1 and A2. Next we need dv by dt term. So obviously we have to move from the current aspects. So current at 0th time is C dv by dt from the capacitor uh, equation and the current at 0 time is equal to 4 ampere which we can substitute here. So from these we can find what is dv by dt at the 0th condition. So we find that on substituting the value of the capacitor the dv by dt is equal to 16. So we can substitute the differentiation of the voltage V of t on differentiating voltage V of t and then substituting the value of 0 for time t 0 we can form another equation in A1 and A2. So we have two equations in two variables. We can determine the value of A1 and A2 and then we can substitute that in the general voltage equation that we have got it. Once we have got the voltage, we can determine the current as C dV by dt and then we can have the solution for the current as well as voltage for all time t greater than 0. This is the first case when the resistance is equal to 5 ohms, system is giving overdamped natural response. Now let us move to the another case that is resistance to be 4 ohm. We will be determining the initial condition I of 0 and V of 0. Alpha equation we will determine R by 2L that is equal to 2. There is no change in the omega naught because it is not dependent on the resistance rather it is dependent on only the inductor and the capacitor. The roots of the characteristic equation we determine which is real and equal. So it is basically the critically damped natural response. 
Now the general equation for the voltage which is the summation of the steady state plus the transient condition. Transient condition is coming from the critically damped case and the steady state voltage is the final voltage which is equal to 24 ohms. So this is the equation of the voltage in the general form. We have to determine the two constants A1 and A2 again from the initial voltage and initial current conditions. So A1 we will be getting minus 19.2 and A2 we are going to get minus 19.2 that we can substitute in the voltage equation. So the method of getting the voltage and uh, the constants A1 and A2 remain the same. We will get the voltage equation first and then the current equation. So when the resistance is 4 ohm it is critically damped system and these are basically the voltage and the current equations for all time t greater than 0. Now let us take the third case when the resistance is 1 ohm. First we determine the initial condition I of 0 and V of 0 and then we determine alpha, put a relationship with respect to omega naught that is alpha is less than omega naught, system is under under damped response. Determine the roots of the characteristic equation, you know that when the system is under damped you will be having ringing effect which is oscillation because you will be having the sine term and the cosine term. So the voltage equation will have the steady state plus the transient formula. Now determine the V of 0 and I of 0 and try to determine what is the constants A1 and A2 that is pretty simple from the previous cases. Same way we are going to determine from the boundary condition of the voltage and its derivatives. So we will be substituting the constants in the general form of the equation of the voltage first and then we are going to obtain the current as C dB by dt. So we will be getting the voltage and the current uh, equation for all time t greater than 0. Then we can compare the under damped, critically damped and over damped conditions, functions of the voltage with respect to time t. We will see that at a time constant of 5 tau, the system will die out all the transient response and there will be steady state. We have also discussed that the critically damped case is the boundary of the over damped and under damped case in, in, in terms of the time that takes to reach the steady state. Over damped system is very sluggish in nature and the under damped case is oscillatory in nature. Critically damped case is the boundary of the over damped or under damped case. Now we will see the parallel RLC circuit. So series we have covered now parallel with a forced response that is the step response. So we have a register, inductor and capacitors which are connected in parallel. There is a switch to determine the transient condition and there is a current source which is connected which will be the driving the network and that results in the forced response. Since it is a parallel network we apply the Kirchhoff's current law at a particular node. So all the current which is meeting and all the current which is leaving we will be equating. So the equation that we are going to get for the KCL equation is V by R for the register. We have taken the current as a variable in the inductor current and the capacitor is CdV by dt current. Now we are having both current and voltage as the variable but we need only one variable. So we will substitute voltage is equal to LDI by DT and we will get a second order differential equation of function current. So current is my variable in this case for the parallel RLC network and on the right hand side of the equation we have some term which indicate that this is basically the forced response of the network. Now the solution of the current is having two cases. One is the transient and another is the steady state. Steady state is again the final case which is equal to the current that is driving the network. The transient case is coming from the nature of the response. So depending upon what type of response you are taking the transient cases will be discussed. That is whether the system is over damped, critically damped or under damped. The general form of the solution will remain the same. So here we have added the value of IS which is the steady state time, steady state the response current. So these are the total responses for the different cases that we have. 
So again, the constants A1 and A2, we will be determining from the boundary condition of the current I0 and DI by DT0. In the previous case, when we discussed the series RLC network, we have taken the voltage as the variable. Here in parallel RLC network, we have taken the current as the variable. We will solve one problem to understand the parallel RLC network cases. So we have register, inductor and capacitor, all are in parallel. There are the sources of 4 ampere, which is a current source and there is a voltage source 30 U of minus T. You know that what is the meaning of U of minus T. We have discussed this when we discuss the singularity function of the step that the system when it is delayed or when it is taken ahead then we will have different notation for the time. So there is a switch which is close at time t equal to 0. We have to determine the current and the register current. When we say the current normal current it is basically the inductor current. When there is a suffix R then it is basically the current which is flowing through the register that is I of R for all time t greater than 0 for this case. Now here in this network you can see that two type of sources are there which are driving the network under different conditions of the switch. If the switch was open then the current source is not there and the circuit is derived from the voltage source. If the switch is closed, then you will be having both the current as well as the voltage which is driving the network. So depending upon the condition of the switch, you have to see which source is coming and playing a role in the network. So for time t less than 0, you know that when time t less than 0, the switch is open and the current I of 0 is equal to 4 ampere which is the current that is flowing in the inductor. So what is happening at time t less than zero? The switch is open and the rest part of the network is not there. All the current which is coming is flowing through the inductor. Now initial capacitor voltage you have to determine. So the initial capacitor voltage means that before the switching action, what is the value of the capacitor voltage? So you have to determine that under the voltage division rule V of 0 in terms of the voltage 30 that is the voltage uh, connected. So you will be having 50 volt because you will be having two register which is connected in the network. Now time t less than 0 the switch is closed okay then uh, I believe that it will be uh, greater than 0 right on um, greater than 0. We have a parallel RLC circuit with current source okay then the resistance 20 ohms and these 20 ohms will be in parallel which is equal to 10 ohms. You have to determine the value of alpha first. This is a parallel RLC network. So you can see the formula which is different from the previous case. We will determine the value of omega naught and then we compare the value of alpha naught and omega naught after determining the roots of the characteristic equation. So from the root of the characteristic equation, we see that the system is basically a condition of damp uh, ringing effect is cut because two roots are there S1 and S2 which are real. Okay. So what type of system is this? The system is under over damped case because alpha is greater than omega naught. In that case, we can write the total current equation which is the sum of the steady state plus the transient and two roots we are going to substitute S1 and S2. Is value is equal to 4 ampere because that is the current which is under the steady state condition. Now time is to determine the A1 and A2 constant from the initial condition. So substitute the value of the time to be 0. I of 0 we substitute in the equation that is for time t equal to 0. We will get A2 is equal to minus of A1. Now take the derivative of the current. So once we take the derivative of the initial current and put the initial condition to be t equal to 0, then we get di by dt equal to 0th condition. Now we know that voltage is equal to L di by dt, which is the initial voltage that is equal to 15 volt. We can find the value of di by dt. So di by dt we find out and then we put it in this equation. A1 is known. So we can determine what is the value of A2 here. So both A1 and A2 we have determined and then we can put it in the complete solution of the current 
where 4 ampere is the steady state and this part is basically the transient part. Then we determine the register current from the inductor voltage LDI by DT. So register current is VT by 20 because both are in parallel. So you can determine the current which is flowing through the register after differentiating the main current equation from the relationship of the inductor voltage VL equal to LDI by DT. Generally, whatever the second order circuit you have, the problem solving steps that you are going to follow is basically determine the initial and the final values that is x of 0 and dx of dt0. These two will come to determine the value of a1 and a2. And x of infinity is basically the steady state. Okay, So that will come in the total response of the network. Now turn off the independent sources and find the transient response. This is basically coming from the natural response of the network. So you will not have any independent sources. You will have only the natural response. There are KCL and KVL equations. These equations are corresponding to series parallel network. Whether you have a series, then apply KVL. Whether you have parallel, we apply KCL. Convert the equation into second order differential equation and obtain the characteristic root of the equation. Then you determine whether the response is over damped, critically damped or under damped. Then you can determine the transient response x of t with two unknown constants. Obtain the steady state response at time t equal to infinite which is obtained at the first step. Then the total response is equal to x of t is equal to the transient plus the steady state. Determine the constant of the transient response using x of 0 and dx of 0 from this initial step. So these steps are the general steps that you are going to follow whenever you are solving any problem on the second order circuit whether it is a series circuit or whether it is a parallel circuit. So it will be the sum of the natural response plus the force response. So determine the natural response condition first and then the force response is nothing but whatever the source is connected in the network.